What's up, everyone, and welcome back to Movie Rays. Millie Bobby Brown and Henry Cavill's new Netflix movie, Enola Holmes, includes characters and elements from Sir Arthur Conan Doyle's Sherlock Holmes series. But it isn't based on the series. Enola Holmes is actually based on a book, The Case of the Missing Marquess, the first book in a series of novels by Nancy Springer. Netflix's movie about Sherlock's little sister is quite different from the book. It also makes some adjustments to the books it was adapted from. Without any further ado, here is what Netflix changed and what the cast of Enola Holmes should actually look like. Number 9. Enola's Age We got to see a lot from the novels in the movie, even some dialogues lifted straight from the pages. And of course, there are some major changes, which are often made where necessary. Aside from Enola Holmes' character changes, when novel fans watch Enola Holmes, they should expect more differences in the other medium. Now it all starts with Enola celebrating her 14th birthday, which makes her two years younger than her Netflix character. Why? Well, Millie is known for playing the iconic character in Stranger Things. She has practically grown up on the screen. So it seems more natural for her to play 16 than 14 in the movie. Also, she is often described as a woman, so 16 is definitely better, and this change is made because of rational reasons. The same happens with Tewksbury. He's 12 in the novel, but in the movie, he's 16 as well. So if I have to fit in and stay hidden from my brothers, I must become something unexpected. Number 8. Mother-Daughter Relationship In the first novel, we don't get to hear much about Mycroft and Sherlock together, but as the movie presents the story, we get to see the conflict between Enola and Mycroft very well. Also in the book, Enola has beliefs that women are treated unjustly, and the reason she believes this is that the money every woman makes goes to her partner and properties pass to sons, not wives. Also, she doesn't actually support the views her big brother has, whom she never spent any time with since she thinks he is trying to control her future. So this is in the book, and the writers decided to keep this the same in the movie. Sam Clayton's character is presented as a villain for Enola to avoid as he puts Enola in a finishing school so she could learn how to be a decent lady. Also, he thinks that this way she won't upset her family anymore. Enola's opening voiceover in the movie shows that she has a really close relationship with her mother. Notwithstanding her mother's suggestion that Enola will do very well on her own, what we hear is that she and her mother are always together, which is not the case in the novel. In the novel, Enola's character is more on her own. She spends most of her time alone walking through the grounds of the estate. Also, in the novel, she reads more while her mother is spending her time painting. And Eudoria is introduced as a suffragette. But there's nothing about her being included in a secret society as it's presented in the movie. Thank you? You're supposed to say thank you. For what? Number 7. Eudoria Holmes if the event with the case of the missing Viscount would never happen, Enola's mother wouldn't disappear. Eudoria Holmes's character was presented in a way that she refused to follow gender standards, and she actually taught Enola about this very well. Same happens in the movie and the book. Eudoria leaves a letter in code to her daughter. Later, her daughter posts code messages on separate newspapers as she expects that her mother would somehow see them and reach her. But Eudoria's reasons to leave have changed. In the movie, Eudoria was a member of a secret organization and was working on a bombing plan. And before the ending, she and Enola reunite, and she tells her that the reasons she left were to be free and because she couldn't bear to have this world be her future. What's different in the book is that Eudoria and Enola never met. Though in the book, Eudoria lets her daughter know that she went away with the Romani to live a free, wandering life. Follow the path of so many girls who once stood where you do now, and just as we molded them. Number 6. Sherlock Works Alone Detective Lestrade is offended when Enola says that she works for Sherlock Holmes. He says that Sherlock Holmes works alone. In the movie, the person who would go on to write about their experiences solving mysteries together, Dr. John Watson, is not included yet. But in the book, Holmes and Watson are already partners. Despite the fact that Enola and Sherlock are not spending as much time in the movie as in the book, it's obvious that Enola is amazed by Sherlock Holmes' abilities. 
You can notice that this in the movie when she suggests that Sherlock will definitely find her mother, but later she's not really fascinated by how he works on the case. Well, the same happens in the novel. Do I want to find you? Number 5. Edith After analyzing Edith's library of seditious, not allowed books about feminism, and eventually reading the contents of Edith's letters to Eudoria, Sherlock finds out that Edith and Eudoria are connected to a women's social movement and calls their plans mischief. Edith doesn't really like the word Sherlock uses and faces Sherlock, saying that the only reason he's not into politics isn't that it's boring, but because he's not used to being powerless and a rich white man wouldn't really care to build a better world since he's not concerned. When you observe his features, Edith's idea about Sherlock's hatred for politics and ignorance about the issues was a feature of Sherlock's that was positive in some way, especially in the BBC series Sherlock. Now, when Enola goes to Edith because she remembers the address as this is the only way her mother gets messages from, and Sherlock goes to Edith as he tracks signs, including soot in the fireplace, is one major change in the movie since Edith does not exist in the book. Number 4. A Different Cipher Do you guys remember when Enola finds a cipher in a newspaper? She thinks it's from Eudoria, but it's actually from her brothers. However, this is in the movie, but in the book it is from her mother. It shows that Eudoria has left a Victorian society to go live with the Romani people, as we stated earlier. And the difference is that in the book Eudoria is trying to escape from society's domination of men, and in the movie you'll see that she's still fighting it as she tries to change it. The message here, maybe, has something to do with the political climates between 2006 and 2020. Enola Holmes' character shows much interest in political change. For instance, she tells viewers that they should vote. However, another difference as characters of the book and the movie is that Eudoria's character is older in the book than her character in the movie. Number 3. Saving Each Other We're sure that both characters, Enola Holmes and Viscount Tewksbury, are ready to face anything. Maybe they haven't shown much knowledge in all the ways of the world, but they are quite capable of facing their struggles even when terrified. One thing the producers of Enola Holmes decided not to change is the bond between Enola and Viscount. As both characters in the movie are fighting for one another in a big confrontation, the same happens in the book. Also, this happens without them really knowing each other, but as we said, they are ready to team up at any time. Moreover, Mycroft and Sherlock never succeed to catch Enola in the novel. When she leaves home, she arrives with a whole new identity in London, using a disguise, and she always succeeds to run away before anything finds out or anyone sees who she really is. Number 2. Enola's Attitude Sherlock seems a bit harsh when he comes home, but all of that changes when he starts caring about Enola. Sherlock being happy about Enola finding out who the culprit was is a reaction that we would not expect in the novel. Now, Enola's character is following the footsteps of her mother, and she confronts her brother's attempts to send her off to a finishing school. She also finds a way where she can use skirts, bustles, and corsets for investigatory interest. Well, it seems like Millie Bobby Brown is the perfect fit for Enola's personality and attitude. Maybe she's quite different in the book, but her smartness, humor, and charm are presented in both the movie and the book. In the book, she wanders in her story as she tells it and gets off track. And in the movie, she's making faces at the viewer to show a point. However, Millie is definitely a perfect fit for Enola. Number 1. Mycroft's Smartness Another major difference in character is the one with Mycroft. He's presented as a semi-villain, and what's really different is that in the movie he's this dull and annoying person. According to fans, this was an incorrect way to impersonate Mycroft. In the books, Mycroft is quite different and is one of the smartest people, especially in Sherlock's family. And let's go back to soft-natured Sherlock Holmes. Well, this may surprise you, but Netflix is being sued by Sir Arthur's estate just because of that. To be more precise, they are not being sued because of Sherlock's softness and character, but because of the gentle side of Sherlock revealed only in the last 10 cases Sir Arthur wrote. Because Enola Holmes gives the gentle side of Sherlock, they are suing Netflix for copyright infringement. In the book and the movie, Enola's path is open for her to be taking different cases and hiding from her brothers. Also, there's always the chance for some characters coming back in the future sequels. With five more books, we're more than happy to see more of Enola's adventures in the future. We end our video here, guys. Share your thoughts about Enola Holmes in the comment section below. Make sure you like the video, subscribe, and hit the bell icon for more amazing videos such as this. Thanks for watching, guys!